all in all the Roman army consisted of 18 centuries of equities, 82 centuries of the first class of which two centuries were engineers, 20 centuries each of the second, third and fourth classes and 32 centuries of the fifth class of which two centuries were trumpeters. Even these measures were inadequate to the challenges Rome was to face. They went to war with the Hernici, Volsi and Latini Italics, undertook the reduction of Etruria and endured an invasion of Gauls under Brennus. Into the gap stepped one of the great generals Rome seemed able to produce at critical moments Marcus Furius Camillus. He held various offices, such as interrex and dictator, but was never king himself. In the early 4th century BC Rome received its greatest humiliation, as Povelli Celts under Brennus sacked Rome itself. The Romans wanted to abandon the city and resettle at Veii in Etruscan city, but Camillus prevented it. If Rome was to re-establish her authority over central Italy, and be prepared to meet any similar disasters in future, some reorganization was needed. These changes were traditionally believed to have been the work of Camillus but in another theory they were introduced gradually during the second half of the 4th century BC. Italy was not governed by city-states like Greece, where armies met on large plains, deemed suitable by both sides, to reach a decision. Far more it was a collection of ill tribes using the difficult terrain to their advantage. Something altogether more flexible was needed to combat such foes than the unwieldy, slow-moving phalanx. The legio, or levy, was introduced at this time, with a structure of manipuli hands full. The infantry adopted a looser fighting formation distinct from the earlier tightly packed hoplite shield wall, and soldiers began to carry javelins. In this formation the Romans become more like their Gallic adversaries than Greek hoplites, 